Survivor Specialist Phil and Alexa are back with the first of our season 40 winners at war tell alls tonight. We are joined by Sarah Lacina of Survivor Cagayan, winner of Survivor Game Changers, and the fire making robbed Giotis of Survivor Winners at War. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us so quickly, too. We haven't even hit a week since the season is over, and you're already here. Uh, right. Um, I think you guys just said, hey, will you? And I said, sure. So <laughs> here we That's are. That's how we like to do it. We like when it's like easy like that. We just like, hey, Sarah, what's going on? And then we get an answer soon. And we're like, wow, that's what happened with David <laughs> Sampson. When we got him on, we were like, oh, my God, we need somebody in two days. We reached out to him. He answered in like 15 minutes. So, <laughs> you know, hey, it's hit or miss. But yeah, thank no, you no. for. Yeah. Thank you yeah. for joining us. This is this should be pretty good. We haven't <laughs> you know, we've got a lot of exit press, but I don't think there's been any like full blown interviews yet from your yeah. cast. Yeah, I don't think so. I think people have kind of gone like live on on Instagram or AMAs or whatever. But um, and I think M Michelle and Natalie might be doing an Instagram on Wednesday. So um, uh, I think you'll start seeing it roll out. But but yeah, I'm super excited to you know get to talk about the season because with the edge, nobody really you know the viewers didn't get to see any exit press like going through and then with this COVID stuff like we barely did any press um and usually you know we did the red carpet so mm -hmm. definitely like uh would like to answer any, any questions the fans have or you guys have just to kind of fill things in so people can you know any questions that they had out there are it's kind of closure for everybody you know mm -hmm. do you think if there was a real finale and there was a red carpet would everyone be wearing the clothes that you made or do you think people would be wearing the red carpet? Uh, yeah, so I was actually supposed to launch my clothing line. Um, you know, the the line that was made while we were on the island that was called Safari Chic, <laughs> and um, and I was coming out with the spring line, but that's been placed on hold. So uh, that'll be uh, to be determined. There you go. I mean, hey, sensitive to the situation. Yeah, everything seems to be moving to end of summer, so you know it'll be a little right, bit right. Yeah. Um, um, and if you guys need anything, send me your measurements and, uh, I'll get working on it. I'd love that. You know, I, the shorts were originally supposed to be made for Ben because Ben had pants and he was wearing jeans and, um, typically your clothes are wet out there. Like, you know, it, rain or you wake up in the morning or you're in the water, whatever. So anyone knows that wearing jeans when they're wet is like the worst thing in the world. And so Ben's poor Ben has jeans the whole time when other people have shorts and, uh, you know, and pants. So I'm like, here, Ben, I'll make you a pair of shorts. Well, uh, so I get the waist, right. Um, I, I didn't get the inseam, right. Mm. Um, so when he put them on, uh, it looked like, um, what would be the word? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know and, yeah. and so uh they were snug and snug. so <laughs> they were snug Fine. so so uh so then you know then just the women had to wear them okay you could have you could have made some you could have made somebody like what rupert had back in pearl islands where he was wearing like that dress made out of whatever they made that would have been pretty fancy and i don't know if I don't know if Survivor or America would have been ready for Ben in that type of outfit out there. I'm just oh, saying. I don't know. It would have looked pretty good. <laughs> I guess he could have cut the jeans into jorts, maybe. That's, yeah, but then what do you do at night? That's it's true. It's so cold out there. You've got to have, I mean, it's it, like Tony. So then Tony, you know, was hating on uh, my clothing line. And he's like, oh, my pants would sell. And he called them convertible pants. So what Tony would do is he cut his pants off, but then tied ties through them so he would untie his pants during the day and then he would tie in the lower half at night and they look stupid but <laughs> and he made fun of my line but he thinks that his would be so profitable and it, sl fiji would never sign off on something like so, that so those were never those weren't like the zip away ones those were actually like he made those like that he cut them off yes that's horrifying. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. And he was taking like a stick and burning the stick and then he'd burn it through his pants and it, he might have gotten burnt doing it. I'm not sure. And he's making fun of me and I'm like, dude, 
your pants are stupid. And he calls them convertible pants. I'm like, they're not convertible pants. Like the top doesn't go down, dude. And so it, anyway, he would tie them on at nighttime. He would untie them during the day. So they're shorts and he thinks they were the best thing ever, but whatever. I, I love that. Everybody's wondering like, okay. And cag on Tony's running around like a crazy person and game changers. He's running around like a crazy person. How, what is he doing to keep himself occupied while he sits at camp? He's burning his shorts so that he can tie them <laughs> together at night. Yep. Um, yeah, he, he really is like a ball of energy. I mean, he would make me race him down on the beach. He'd be like, come on, let's just see who's faster. And I'm like, I, I don't, I don't No, no, no. He beat me and wow. yeah, on to call. So uh, no joke, we raced and I'm not a sprinter. I'm a distance runner. And so, uh, oh yeah, I never heard the end of that one. And then gosh, he would make me bowl with him all the time. He would set up like these bamboo cups like their pins and then take the stupid coconuts and he'd make a bowling lane and he'd be like come on let's bowl and I'm like I don't want to like <laughs> it's not even and he was so good at it like the the coconuts aren't even round and the the lane's not flat and he would bowl strikes and I'm like this is dumb I don't want to do this anymore <laughs> like but that's just him he always wants to do something so he's he's fun to have around it makes me laugh because on a lot of newbie seasons, all we hear about is how everybody's starving and exhausted and tired and doesn't want to move. And like, I know we had like Jamal on 39, he was sleeping in the thing. And that was like his storyline for like an episode. And then it feels like Tony, like this Tony just not, I mean, David said the same thing about Tony. He said he slept the entire plane ride because he doesn't sleep when he's actually in <laughs> Fiji. Well, so Tony hates flying. And so I think the reason he had his head down the entire ride is because he was scared. And I'm not kidding. Like the dude hates flying. And like, like if his family's going to go somewhere, they they all take separate flights in case one crashes. I'm like, Tony, that's like, come on, bro. Like, but I'm telling you, that's just him. And he's so sincere about it. And, but it, it and he means well, um, but yeah, he's terrified. But I'll tell you what, we did so much out there, like on to call, we hiked all the way up to the top of the mountain like twice. Um, we did so much stuff like building the ladder. I mean, that was ridiculous. Um, and that that was days, a few days, like the ladder got built one day and it totally trashed and then we had to rebuild it. And I mean, it was a mess. And we really thought he was going to fall when he was climbing up there. And then we're like, well, no, yeah, climb higher. You're almost up there. And now he's like yelling at us like, no, I'm not going any higher. And we're like, well, you have to now. He's like, no, it's going to break. And we're like, well, we told you that a long time ago, but now you're already up there. So go <laughs> and like, just yelling at him. And uh, it's it, it really is fun. And it lightens the mood out there. So it, we had a good time. Yeah. And so I think like a good place to start with like winners at war and especially this relationship with Tony, which has dominated the first eight minutes of this conversation. I, we I'm got sorry. it. We we, no, no, no. And that's fine. I mean, that's totally fine. We just have, like, I feel like we have to start with this. You and Tony have played on three seasons each, three seasons together. And you have each, you've won all the seasons you're on. So like if Sarah and Tony are going to be on a season, yeah. Sarah and Tony are going to win. It's going to be mm -hmm. one of those two. So I win next. <laughs> you win next. next. You, hopefully around like season 43, 44, something like that. You can get out there and you can play again. And then, and then it's your turn. But What's crazy to me is how you guys started because back during Cagayan, you were my winner pick and oh, Tony, man. I thought was going to get last place. And then we see that whole merge episode and we see your reaction and we see you kind of after, um, you know, after the season's over and then your story, at least for now in 2020 ends with you and Tony doing fire against each other and neither one of you even being able to look at the camera or at anybody because you're crying so much. Like, mm -hmm. what is it about Tony that like just changed from that first time you played together till now? Or was it nothing? Um, honestly, I don't think anything's changed about either one of us. We're, we're both extremely passionate about what we do and we're loyal people. Um, and so when, when I went out there and played um, Kageyan, now he didn't know me. He has no loyalties to me. He doesn't know me outside the game. So, I mean, when he, and he's the one that kind of taught me how to play that way is like, Hey, you know, when we're having this conversation, if I tell you my favorite food is pizza, uh, but then I go and vote you out, it doesn't mean that my favorite food's not pizza. That was a real conversation we had. Um, but yes, I voted you out, it, but it doesn't make me fake that conversation was still real. And I know that's a terrible example, but it's, is 
simple as I can make it without, you know, having to be complicated about explaining conversations. But it's so once he taught me how to play like that and look at it that way, then then um, I, I could see where he was coming from. So I knew when we played this season, I mean, Tony and I had gotten so close and and that um, his loyalties outside the game will carry over into the game. Now his loyalty in the game doesn't carry over into the game, but, mm-hmm. but if he, if I knew, I knew Tony would not burn me like, and it, as he knew, I wouldn't burn him. Like that's just who we are as people. And so that's where I got bit the first time, you know, it's cause I'm like, Nope, Nope. I won't vote out Trish. I'm not going to do it. And I refuse to do it. And Cass is like, well, I'm not going to play with somebody who's refusing to vote out somebody, you know, that puts, and, and on her part, that's a good move because it's, I'm saying Trish is more important than you. So yeah, why would you want to work with me? And, you know, that was my fatal flaw in, in Kageon. So, so that's what I changed after there is I w- I'm willing to work with anyone and I'm willing to vote out anyone. Um, and, you know, it, but it comes with a heavy price too. So, so yeah, I would say, though Tony and I over the years have just become friends. And then after this season, we really, I mean, we were out there 38 days together. And so it being out there cold, hungry, exhausted, physically, emotionally, all of that just bonds you even more that the later you get in the game, I mean, like Troy Zan and I, I talked to the guy like twice a week, you mm-hmm. know, we played 39 days together. It's, it just does that. That's what, that's what those days out there do. And so by the time we got to the end, you know, we had envisioned us two sitting in the end. And when we finally figured out that that can't happen, uh, it was heartbreaking for us. But at the same time, I was, you know, if it can't be me, I'm glad it's him. So Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I absolutely love the guy. He's, he's seriously one of the best guys ever. And And go, go to Alexa. So in the beginning, at, at 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 the Decal camp, when you two were put on the same tribe immediately, were you nervous about that? Not because you were nervous about the two of you, but you were nervous about maybe everyone's perception of the two of you coming in as a pair. Right. I was super nervous. Well, I was I was really excited because I'm like, okay, good. Now, like I've I've at least got somebody that I know is going to have my back. Uh, but then Yule starts, you know he's very vocal about, oh, so, you know, Sarah and Tony have played together and Sandra and Tony have played together and Sandra and Sarah have played together, you know, and he's calling out all these and I'm looking at you all like, shut up, dude. And, um, so then once he started hitting on the poker alliance thing, we're like, yes, remember? Mm -hmm." And we tried to like, yeah, we tried to facilitate that and, and shove that because, you did know everybody's connections, like mm-hmm. so and so knows so and so, so and so, you know. But what he forgot to leave out was that him and Sophie knew each other, and I didn't know that. So it's like it's funny how you know he did call us all out. But so we would try. Tony and I would try to distance ourselves from each other on the call, and it was almost like um, when we would get to meet up at night, I'd be like, "Oh my gosh, I miss you, T. Like, how was your day? Like, <laughs> we didn't get to hang out." Um, and then after the merge, I, everybody was kind of settled in. So then we got to hang out more and, mm-hmm. and, and we're like, screw it at this point, everybody knows. And I mean, they're not coming after us. So we built the bonds we needed to that. We don't really have to hide it anymore. Yeah. How did the two of you do that? How were the two of you able to make it so that everybody never thought to vote either of you out? Because I'm sitting here watching going, what is wrong with all of you? Vote Tony out of the game. And the man never received a vote. Right. Um, Right. Like coming in, I mean, I think I had five votes coming into the game. People wanted me out. Um, And I would say Tony and I are the most removed from the survivor community, community after the games. So we were really nervous coming in that we didn't have anyone you know, on our side. And, um, right away, uh, Tony hung around camp the first few days, which was good. So that he, he kind of built trust there. Um, you and I got close, me and Kim, me and Sophie, um, me and Sandra and, and Wendell and I, our relationship didn't get shown like at all, but Wendell and I, he, I probably hung out with him the most, um, because 
he, he liked to always do something. And so we were always building something and he was showing me how or whatever. And we were just always like, you know, all those benches around camp and tables and this and that, uh, that was mostly like, well, it was Wendell, but then, you know, I was kind of his, I called it his apprentice. Um, but yeah, it's just, it really is. It's just getting to know people. And then once you develop those bonds and they're real, I mean, I'm sorry, but you anyone that's going to go, oh, it's just in genuine or it's not fake. Then how do I play three seasons and walk away with bonds in the game every single time? And, and nobody can put on a front for 39 days, especially when you're tired, hungry, cold, emotional, blah, 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 blah. So what you're seeing is what you're getting. And that's just who I am as a person. And I think where I get flack in the end is that when you walk out of the game, it's yeah, but you voted me out and it's feels like it was a slap in the face. So then, then you do question everything that was said. And I wish like Tony and I get that and we get it that, Hey, it's, it's real still. Um, but a lot of people don't. And so it's hard to kind of, you know, put that in perspective. Mm -hmm. And I think and I'm, not, I'm not just saying this, but that, that the pizza analogy I know you said that that sounds so simplified, but sometimes it it is kind of that black and white. Right. So I I, I, to, I completely understand the, and obviously I've I've never been a part of it, but I understand the the feeling of being burned. But to be able to separate that, to separate the game from real life, I think that says a lot. Uh, I'll tell you what: if anyone watching is is gonna ever play, you have to do that to win. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, and I think everybody would agree with that is you have, like I said, it sucks. It is not fun. It's not human nature to stab your best friend in the back. I mean, I don't know anyone who gets joy in doing that. And if you do, then you probably should reevaluate like who you are. Um, and it, it like destroys me. Like, I, I mean, I had major breakdowns out there because I didn't want to play 40 because of the way I felt after game changers, I felt like a terrible person because it's not in our nature to do that. And it's, or it's not in my nature. And so I did build these bonds and it wasn't fake. And then for people to be like, Oh, that was so fake. It's like, what are you talking about? Like how, how really, how, how do you think nobody, if it was all fake, then somebody out of the 20 people out there, somebody should have seen through it, but nobody did. You know why? Because it's not fake. It's real. That's why now it's this season too. Nobody was like, oh yeah, she's being fake. No, because it's real. And that's what, but I think people have a hard time grasping how you turn around and you stab them in the back and you don't stay loyal because they interpret that as then everything you've said isn't true. But like you said, Alexa, like it's, yeah. When we talked about pizza and I said, I love pepperoni pizza and it's my favorite. And then I go and I write your name down pepperoni pizza is still my favorite. Yeah. Right. You know? And, and so was this why it was like even more important to you? Because we saw you and Tony, even when you guys had your fight, especially after the Sophie vote and all that, is this why it was so important to you to like, to never cut Tony? Because like this time you were coming out and it was like, this is one relationship that I'm just not going to burn no matter what happens in this game. Yeah, it, it wasn't worth it to me. And, and I know people, it's funny because people will go, it's a $2 million game. You know what though? Um, your mental health is worth a heck of a lot more than $2 million a night. And, and I've gone through some hard times at, from playing the game. And mm -hmm. so um, I would rather not feel like a piece of shit mm -hmm. uh, than have my life's fine. You know, yeah. we're, we're taken care of. We're, we're fine. And so um, would I rather have $2 million in the bank and feel like, the way I had felt after game changers or would I rather not feel like a piece of shit? And I, I would choose the latter. So um, if people think that's crazy, then I mean, go out there and try it. Mm -hmm. Feel this way. And, and you'll see what I mean. I think that's extremely reasonable. It's, it's just, it's so old school in, in the thinking in terms of just from a survivor perspective, like my friend and I, who I grew up with and we watched this show since season one, we were talking about it and he was saying, even after you and Tony with that fire making, he's like, and even you and Ben, like he was like, these are the old school moments that we don't get anymore. Like these really emotional, like even Tommy from 39, who has great relationships with everybody on that jury 
We never saw him like gutted. Even when he had a blindside Janet, she was a pawn on his board that just had to go. And you could see that like with you and to- like that was a that was a blind side at final three. That was Lex and Ethan having like one of them had to go and like they're devastated by, it. you know, it's, it's these brutal moments that we just don't really see anymore. And, you know, I miss it. And I, I hope that this is a trend that starts to happen as we move forward with the show. Yeah, it, it does. It's a, I think it humanizes survivors so much more. I mean, when you're sitting there when, like the Ben vote out, I'm sitting there going, dude, what? And, but there was so much leading up to that. Like, when Natalie came back in the game, it was almost like, not that Natalie used Ben as a punching bag, but it was almost just like getting socked over and over. And, um, it, and just the wind kept getting knocked out of him because it was, you know, Oh, everybody on the jury hates you. And then, I mean, nobody wants to hear that. Right. And then when you go to tribal and you see the jury and they roll their eyes or they shake their head at whatever Ben's saying, and he's sitting here going, what did I do? And, and he's, you know, and already, like I said, you're 37 days into the game at that point. And then, you know, and, and Natalie's saying what she has to, I I don't fault her for saying, you know, whatever she needs to say to, to do well, but it's just, you know, telling Ben, you don't have a shot. There's no way you can win. You, I mean, that's just demoralizing and you're sitting there going, what? And that was even like what was happening to me. Like, oh yeah, you know, you're just following Tony. You're just, and I'm going, are you guys being serious right now? And so it it does. Is it's it's like, what did we just go through for what? Like, mm-hmm. uh, and, and then like Michelle said it best though, is perceptions reality, and it doesn't matter what I think or what I know that I did or what Tony knows that I did or if Tony would say, oh yeah, we did this together or this or that or she did this and. Um, it matters what the jury thinks. And so, yeah. um, yeah, it just, um, I, I, I have so many questions. I want to springboard yeah, off that but sure. before, but before we do real quick, I just want to give Troy his one moment just because he put his comment in here. Uh, and since he helped us so much with this, this is for you. Wow. Oh, <laughs> I love you, Troy. And I don't I think he's good. I got to, he, is he watching right now? He sure I guess is. he was. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Troy, I okay. I just got done working out. I have a stinking hat on, <laughs> but thank you. See, he's the best. I also, it's it's uh, it's the Princess Bride. I don't think that means what he thinks that means. I don't think he knows what bequeath means. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what it means. Uh, a lot of different interpretations. Oh, see, he's the best. But okay, you 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 really did what you just said there really did open my mind though. But Troy's and distracted me, so blame yeah, him. Let's go but, back to some emotionally difficult. But the emotionally difficult here. What I I, I want to go back to this final five uh, to the five person tribe. I want to go back to that. Uh, I, I guess I froze right for a second, but I want to go back to Yara, where it was you, Sophie, Adam, Ben, and Rob. Right. Okay, so we know that Adam, Ben, and Rob have a really bad relationship coming into that tribe. Mm -hmm. So for you and Sophie coming in there down three to two, what was that situation like? And do you think that that is probably the reason why that, because of what happens in that five person tribe, why Ben got so much hate by the end of the game? A hundred percent. Um, and it goes for both of us. I mean, not just Ben, but me too. Um, so, you know, we go in and Sophie and I kind of look at each other like, uh, Oh, we're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Um, because, I mean, you're down in numbers and, um, I had met Ben outside the game, but I hadn't talked ben, to Ben going in. And it's funny. Cause you'll hear a lot of people talk about, Oh, there's so many pregame alliances. I literally talked to Tony and Sandra before the game. That's it. I have no reason to lie. Like I would, t- if I'm going to admit to talking to them, why wouldn't I admit to talking to other people? Like, but so to put it all to rest, those are the only two people I talked to. And, but the funny thing is, is, and I won't name names, but there's like two or three people you wouldn't expect that literally talked to like 10 or 12 people on the cast and but they didn't reach out to me or Tony. So when we're hearing this, we're like, what? And so it's funny. Cause we'll get accused of like, Oh, pre-gaming. Yeah, I did. I talked to Tony and Sandra, but I, there are people that talked to like 10 anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, Look where you guys ended up. So yeah, right. That's probably why everybody wanted to vote you out before the game even started. Probably. And so, uh, yeah, we, co- we go into Yara and we're like, Sophie and I are like, 
crap, we're in trouble. Um, Sophie doesn't know that I have the steal a vote at this point. And, um, and we're all like, okay, there's definitely going to be an idol out here. And we had been looking and I knew I was in Rob's crosshairs more so than Sophie. And we, and Ben and I kind of walked off right away and, you know, the whole dumping of the bags at tribal and Adam spilling the beans. And so they all had a rocky relationship and Ben filled me in on it and Adam filled Sophie in. And then obviously Sophie and I are tight. And so we go back and we're like, Hey, look, this is what's going on. So we're like, okay, perfect. We just got to play our cards. Right. Um, and we got to go find that idol. So I felt like they were kind of looking more at me. So I legitimately was like building the shelter. I'm like, so if you go look, just, you know, um, I'll, I'll kind of keep an eye on everybody. And sure enough, she goes off and she finds it. And I'm like, oh, this, I mean, it couldn't be more perfect, you know, but uh, as we lost and then we ended up going to, as we lost the challenge and we ended up going to tribal, um, it was pretty clear that day, like uh, Adam and Ben both had animosity towards Rob based on what had happened um, on the other tribe. And then uh, he wasn't, you know, the most pleasant to me or Sophie. So obviously I could tell he wanted the boys together. And then right, like the minute we got back from the challenge, he's like, boys, let's go. And the three of them go to the water well. I mean, Sophie look at each other like, Okay. And it was already, it was already a done deal at that point. And it's like, mm -hmm. see you doing things like this just solidifies that to the boys that they're making the right choice. I mean, you're like bossing them around. You're like, come on, let's go. And it wasn't a discussion at the well. It was him telling them, Hey, we're voting out Sarah. So they walk up and like immediately like Ben, I think was behind him and he's mouthing, you know, my name, like, and so it's like we we're all on the same page at this point. And then, you know, the buddy system was enacted. And so what we did throughout the day was we would try to um, like if if one of the boys would go out to like go to the bathroom or something like we would eventually go out too because then. Rob didn't want anybody split up. So we would mm -hmm. purposely try to just antagonize it a little bit, but yet we didn't want to give it up to that. Hey, you're going in the event. He did have something, you know, so we tried to keep it under wraps um, the whole day, but he definitely thought like <laughs> he was good to go. So. Yeah. And, and to me, like, in that, with that system that he was doing, I mean, it worked in 22 because it was new players, but in this season where everybody has watched Rob play, I mean, I think this is ultimately hurts him that he'd played four times before this because everybody saw him and knew exactly what he was trying to pull and knew you had to get rid of him at some point. But like, do you, is this really where like Ben and you, like, this is really like where it started, where it was just going to be so hard for you to convince a jury because by getting rid of Rob, even Adam or Sophie, the same thing, if by them having to get rid of Rob, Rob now goes over and can communicate with everybody out on extinction Island. Do you think that that like just really was going to make it hard for all four of you to be able to overcome this already that early in the game? Yeah. Okay. So I feel like we're, I'm going to jump really far ahead, mm -hmm. but to answer your question, like specifically is uh, at, at the final six, when I give that speech about, um, you know, partners in the game, if it's two males, they're like, they, they split credit females, and a male, the male shares more. That actually stemmed from um, when Natalie had come back in the game. Well, Michelle gives me that speech about perception is reality. And I'm going, okay, she's got my wheels spinning now going, okay, I guess I didn't realize that this is what they actually thought. I know what's going on, but um, what I know and what they're seeing are two different things, obviously. So when Natalie came back in the game, uh, Natalie made it clear that, um, Rob and Parvati were over there talking mad shit about me and Ben. And I'm going, I've never even played with Parv. Uh, what mm. she saying? And so the only way place it could have came from was then from Rob and what pissed me off about it. And, and what fueled that speech was, you know, I remember sitting at that tribal council and he's like, you know, it's a numbers game. And, and if, if you're just on the wrong side of the numbers, but you need to respect gameplay. And it was basically the speech he was giving me was I'm voting you out, but you need to respect my game. And when I'm sitting in the final three, you need to vote for me. 
And that that's in essence what he said to me. And then to come find out that, okay, well, I voted you out, but I didn't do anything to Rob when we were there. Like he, he barely talked to me. He maybe said 10 words to me the whole time he was there. He told me he was voting Sophie out. You know, um, I asked him if he wanted to work together and I could tell he didn't want to, he wanted nothing to do with me and that's fine. I, I don't care. That's your prerogative. Um, and so th then when I vote him out and then now to find out that all you're doing is shit talking me when you don't know anything about me, you didn't even give me the time of day, like to get to know me, you barely talked to me. And, um, I, and, and then also to hear that Parv was doing it, I'm going, she does. I, I've never even met the woman. I, I've met the woman. She interviewed me once after Kagayan, but that doesn't mean I, we know each other. Right. And so I'm going, so that's where that got stemmed is it's funny when you were going to vote me out, I needed to respect you and give you my vote. But because I voted you out now, you're not respecting me at all. I guarantee you, I sit in the final three. I don't get his vote. Mm -hmm. And, and, which I would like to know why, but, but see, if you look at it, Ben and I were hated by the jury. Well, not, not, not the full jury, but like the Parves and the, and the Robs and we were hated by them because I think Rob had animosity towards us because we voted him out, you know? And I think the reason Sophie and Adam didn't get it because they were already out of the game. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I, I think that was, so typically, and I said that in one of my exit press is, you know, if it's a typical season where there's no edge, uh, final five looks a lot different because Rob and Parv would not have been on jury mm -hmm. and neither would Tyson. And so you remove them from a jury and it's a different ball game. Ben's mm -hmm. got a shot now. I've got a shot now because they're not trashing our names, you know, uh, Rob never played with Tony and, and Parv never played with Tony. So they, they literally can't say anything about him uh, because they don't know, you know, but yet they trash us. It's so mm -hmm. whatever. So, and, and yeah, so what I was going to say is early in the game, you guys vote out Amber, your tribe votes out Amber right away. Natalie goes first, then Amber goes home second. And, and then we see kind of the other tribe and I know you probably, I mean, you talk to Ben all the time, so you kind of got to get in their heads of why they were voting out people. But do you think that it would have impacted even how you voted people out early if there was no edge or did it really not have an impact on the game at all? Were you going to vote out Amber and Tyson when you had the chance anyway? Yeah. So, um, no, I don't think the edge would have impacted anything. I think the boot order would have, would have stayed the same. Um, so when Amber went, originally the vote was going to be Tyson. And um, Yule and Sophie wanted Amber out. Um, and Tony really, uh, I don't remember. Uh, anyway, what was happening is Tony and I were kind of like, hey, look, now Yule really wants to drive right now. Let's let Yule drive. Let's just take a back seat. That's our first vote. And so we end up uh, you know, going along with the Amber vote just so that we weren't, you know, seemed to be overpowering. And, uh, and then, but Tyson, then when Tyson went after that, I mean, he sunk his own boat on that because he, he had pulled me down to the beach the night before and was like, um, Hey, you, me, Sandra, Tony, and Kim all need to stick together and get either, um, Sophie or Yule out. And so I'm like, all right, let me go talk to Sandra and let me go talk to Tony. Let me see if they're on board. Cause Tyson already had Kim on board apparently. So they were on board. Well then Yule is talking with Tyson and he's like, Hey, who do you think you want to vote out? And Tyson throws out Sandra's name. Well then Yule goes back and tells Sandra. Mm -hmm. Well now Sandra's <laughs> like, what the hell? And I'm like, dude, Tyson, you, you can't throw out somebody's name who's in our alliance. Like mm -hmm. throw someone else, put Nick or Wendell's name out there. Like to you don't throw. Cause now Sandra doesn't want to work with you. So now at this point, Sandra's like, peace, I'm out. I'm not working with Tyson. Well, we don't have the numbers now. And I'm like, dude, I can't help you at this point because I mean, Sandra's out. We need her for a number. And so, yeah, he shot himself in the foot on that one. It, it didn't have to be him. Um, but 
but yeah, I think regardless of the edge, boot order stays the same. Yeah. So er early on, because on Yara, you and Sophie, you're tight immediately. Was that something that had been building on the original Decal tribe, or did that was that sort of born out of necessity? Uh, no, me, Sophie, and Kim were were tight on Decal. Um, and in fact, honestly, like Decal was like the best tribe I've ever been on. Mm -hmm. It was so fun. Wendell's fun. Nick's fun. Yule was great. I mean, Sophie, Kim, Amber, Amber's awesome. You know, um, she has great stories. Uh, she, I, I loved hearing about like when she was getting ready to go play and, and the things that they, they were going to have them like do skydiving and whatnot. And so Amber's really cool. But we, and Tyson's funny, you know, so everybody got along really, really well. And it was funny because then when Sophie and I went to Yara, we were talking about how homesick we were because we loved <laughs> DeKal so much that we just wanted to like swim over to DeKal because we didn't want to be on Yara anymore because <laughs> Yara was awful. And the, like the location was awful. And then like, uh, it was just a way different dynamic. So um, definitely we were homesick. So, so you mentioned Kim there. We saw that Kim didn't know what was going on at the beginning. Is that just incorrect? Was Kim more in the know than what we were led to believe by the edit? Um, I would say yes and no. I mean, she definitely on the Amber vote was skeptical. Me and Sophie kept telling like Kim, Hey, you're fine. Now we didn't know she had the idol at that point. And so, or wait, yeah, she shared half with Sophie, right? She told Sophie right after she found it, which I guess was, I don't know, like day nine or 10 or something. Oh, yeah, like that. Yeah, I can yeah. never keep track. So she didn't have it on the Amber Vote, right? Yeah, she didn't have it on the Amber Vote. Right. Um, but we're, we're like, dude, Kim, you're fine. Trust me. Like, you're going to see your name come up. And we're trying to reassure her. And I just think she was never like all in with trusting. Uh, me at least maybe she was with Sophie I think on um like a personal level we were way different than a uh, game trust level um like personal level we got on great um so yeah Kim was definitely in on um I mean she knew the Amber vote was going down she knew the Tyson vote was going down um and then on the when they when Sandra got voted out, well, clearly nobody knew what was going on there. Um, and then I think that was the only other time they went to tribal. And then you know we're all back together um, after the merge. So yeah, Kim definitely she was in the know. It was it was interesting as fans because we're watching Kim at the beginning. Like I just remember the scene of her falling down on the beach and being like, "This isn't fun. I don't know what's going on." And I'm like what is going on? But then once the merge hit, she seemed like she was taking over some form of control. So it's, it's yeah. Yeah. Um, no, that was definitely real. When Kim fell down, it was like, guys. And I'm like trying to tell her, I'm like, dude, you're good. Like, just like, we're telling you, we know what's going on. I know that you want to hear it from a horse's mouth. Like, uh, but some, I, I mean, Yule has people afraid of this poker lion, so people don't necessarily want to, you know, um, put people don't want to. Sorry, no, you're no, good. it's fine. Him. Don't worry about it. That's, I get it. <laughs> we can hear him, but it's okay. Don't worry. Oh, about sorry. It. No, he's cute. They're excited. Here you go, Nathan Garcia says, "Wyatt, uh, <laughs> Wyatt, come here. Someone wants to see you real quick. We've got a fan. Hey, come here real quick." We got a couple. We got one. We got two. We got three. There's Wyatt. So there you go. For all the Wyatt fans, he just made his appearance and he's waving. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> um, and we could hear Knox in the background yeah, too. Yeah, Knox, so. you want to say hi real quick, buddy? <laughs> hey. hey. I like Knox. how he hides behind you in the chair instead of popping up and in. He's got a great right, hair. Buddy. Hey, I cut it. Nice job. Wow. Thanks. I was yeah, going to say, calls, I, I cut hair. Well, uh, he's Sarah, nice I might call you in a second because <laughs> I, I, got, need, I, I need I to like you. shave my head. Um, but yeah, no, 
uh, just that whole Kim thing, just it surprised me. And I think it surprised a lot of people. And it, I kind of, I'm kind of curious because you said you were out of the community for a while or like you and Tony were like the most removed. And so you only talked to Tony, you only talked to Sandra before coming into the game. How, who like surprised you maybe like the most in, in like a positive way or who surprised yeah. you kind of the opposite way where you're like, wow, I'm kind of surprised that maybe they weren't not necessarily as good of a player as you expected, but weren't what you thought they were going to be. Um, what, well, uh, Sophie, um, but you know what? I, I said in my interview with Dalton Ross before the game started, I said, Sophie and I will be best friends out there because, um, I mean, I watched her seasons and I read her press and her bios and whatnot, and I could just tell we're, we're very similar. Um, and so, uh, yes, she plays the game a lot like I do. Knox, buddy, hey. Um, and she plays the game a lot like I do, and she's a force to be reckoned with. And um, I definitely think she showed people how good she really is. Mm -hmm. um, and and truthfully, I was probably her downfall because w Sophie and I were so close, but yet Tony and I were so close, mm -hmm. um, had had – Sophie been closer with somebody that wasn't me. Um, I don't know that he takes her out then, you know. Do you even think he would have been able to blindside her in that way? Because she probably thought she was good because you didn't get wind of it. Exactly. And and that's that's why it was such a blindside is because, I mean, we were, uh, if she didn't catch wind and I didn't catch wind, and ain't happening. And especially when we think we got Tony for sure. And we got Ben and, and it's Sophie. So it's Tony, Ben, Sophie, Sarah. Um, and then Kim, cause Kim was with me and Sophie too, you know? So we're like, Oh yeah, we're good to go. Tony will not do that. And like, I had vouched for him uh, up and down. And I tell you what, I almost murdered him that night. Like he, you're going to have to talk to him sometime and have him describe what it's like. And still today he he's like, he's like, yo, I had to walk away quickly several times before I got hit. I'm like, I wasn't going to hit you. And then he tries saying that I was swinging his water bottle around and throwing his bag on the ground. I'm like, no, I wasn't. He goes, I was there. Yes, you were. I'm like, I was there. I don't swing your water. He's like, yes, you were. And I'm like, so, uh, but I definitely went ballistic on him. Mm -hmm. So yeah. if you, if you had it your way, and I know that like, hindsight's 2020 but if tony doesn't blindside sophie or if tony tries to and you catch wind of it how what was your plan at that point for the end with the three of you because obviously you were super tight with both of them how did, right. you, how did you have it in your mind where it was oh so, well it was like the four of us it was me ben sophie right. and tony um and you know like looking back now that's just wishful thinking because in reality I, that's an awful, like four people to go to the end with. Mm -hmm. Um, Sophie probably wins. Um, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. so, uh, it's it, honestly, I mean, I didn't win the game, but Tony saved me or himself by getting rid of Sophie. Cause Sophie would have beat both of us. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that's what a lot of us were thinking because as we're trying to figure out who the winner is going to be as this is going on at the beginning of the game, we see Sophie and Yule and we're like, Ooh, that's a power couple. And then mm -hmm. when Yule goes, we still see Sophie, Sophie and you making a lot of the moves. And we watched the two of you go from being on the bottom to then even when it was split two and two after Rob goes home, we're all still sitting here going, well, Adam's toast. Like he's got no shot. They're like nobody was thinking Sophie was going to go. So really it was, she just, I mean, yeah, I know that I know that she's bummed about the outcome, but I feel like everybody was sitting here looking at Sophie is playing oh, yeah. this game so damn well mm -hmm. right now. She was. I would love to see her play again because she has so much potential. Like, I mean, she could kill it. Mm -hmm. um, she's got what it takes. She's smart as hell. Um, and so oh, we actually we had our own uh, alliance nickname. We were we were the unusual suspects, mm -hmm. and because nobody um, would have expected Sarah and Sophie to team up, but. Yeah, she was my girl. Did Nick um, name any alliances this go round? Or All was right. that okay? So here's <laughs> the Sounds name. like we had some. So Nick and I, we were Law and Order. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. uh Uh-huh. And then, uh, so then me, Nick, Sandra, Tony, and Wendell, we were the system on the call because uh, Nick and Wendell are our attorneys and then Tony and I are cops. And then Sandra, I think has our law degree, something she fit in the system. Mm -hmm. So we called it, you know, the system, like the legal system. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we would all, so when we would fit that in, we'd be like, be like, Oh yeah, the system works or can't beat the system. And we'd be saying that that in, in random conversation and anyone in the system knew it. Okay. So then uh, the system breaks up because Wendell Wendell's out. Um, and then, like I said, you had the unusual suspects and then, um, gosh, so I have to throw this up here. I'm listening, but I'm plugging my computer in. I have to throw this up here because you're saying the unusual suspects. We need Sophie back just for this right here so that she can be Kaiser Sophie because of, <laughs> that, that would be amazing. Thank you, Jordan Alford, for that. That's amazing. And she really, I mean, honestly, if anybody was the Kaiser Soze of this season, it was Sophie because nobody was expecting the way she played. And it's a bummer oh. she went out the way she did. But if she would have went further and would have gotten to that fire making or something like that, we would have all just been like, how did she turn that on after what we saw the first time of her, which really wasn't much. Right. So. Right. Yeah. She crashed. She really did. Um, I'm so loving cool. the system. Oh God. What's that? I'm saying, I just, I love the system because you can talk about that in normal conversation. And oh, no it's one, great. We're like, no one can't, that. Yeah, can't beat the system. We vote Tyson out. We're like, can't beat the system. And, and we're <laughs> like, uh, you know, and then, uh, I, I mean, we would use that so randomly and it, it was, it, you could use it in, in typical conversation. Well, then we had, um, me, Nick, Ben and Tony, okay. we were the brigade mm-hmm. cause it's winners at war. So we took like a, a military term. And so we were all the brigade and uh so after sophie was gone the brigade was like marching full force forward and so yeah oh yeah we had yeah and then a cops are us obviously and then uh me and sandra and tony like we were the gc's game changers Mm -hmm. um oh yeah we had so many it it was crazy a lot to keep track of uh, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> you got nothing to do out there all day long. So you come up with <laughs> stupid names and I mean, it's fun. So. I, I know. I just love like here we have the brightest minds in survivor history and you're all sitting around like, what can we call ourselves? What yeah, they're, <laughs> but they're, tell me they're not good. Those are good ones. On your those are good ones. That's legit. Law and order, come on, the system, the brigade. I mean, those are some of the most it's it's not quite the thoroughbreds that Nick was throwing out in his first season. These these are these are all pretty badass. I know. Right. Right, for sure. Um, all right. So then another thing I kind of want to ask here, and this is this is more about just like the game as a whole, and then we can kind of dive into what your plan was, even with Tony or just how you felt when Natalie came back, but kind of leading into the Natalie question, what did you think about Edge being on this season? Did you think it was gonna be there when you came out? Like, did you think that that was gonna happen? Um, yeah, I mean, my honest opinion was they were gonna bring it back mm-hmm. only because I think um you know, everybody's reluctant to say yes to coming to play because nobody wants to be the first boot. Um, you know, I don't want to burn all my vacation time. You have to go on the pre-jury trip. I don't want to burn. I don't want to be away from my family if I'm the first one voted out. So I think that was kind of a selling point to get everybody without telling us it was there. I think they kind of alluded, alluded to the fact that it would be there. So I was under the impression definitely it would be there. And it, so pre pre game, I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. I'm glad it's there because um, you get the most out of going. Then it's like at least I'm not voted out first, and then I'm on a vacation, the re- or you know some trip I don't want to be on. Um, not that I would have wanted to be on the edge, but at least you can come home and say you still actually kind of played Survivor. Um, so I did like it, but then obviously I feel the same way about it that most people do. Is like well, it's not really fair. Like mm-hmm. it's, it's, uh, um, I, but I also didn't think a winner or I didn't think on a winter season that the edge would have a shot. And then 
the fire tokens added a different element. So had you removed the fire tokens and had it like the original edge of extinction, um, Natalie doesn't like stand a chance. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, cause her resume was, uh, the advantages she sent in the game and whatnot. You wipe all that out and now, well, one, she doesn't, she, she can't buy an idol and she goes at six. Mm -hmm. I mean that, so mm -hmm. I think that's why I didn't mind it going into the game is cause I'm like, well, it's going to be impossible for an edger to even make it deep. Um, mm -hmm. But then once everything got added in, I mean, it, then it really got a little, much yeah and and what's interesting is when she came back there was no chance to vote her out because she won the two or she had the two immunity idols and then won the immunity um but who who was it when once you knew it was in and, and you saw the way that the game was going and you're getting down to the final five you got michelle still in the game you got denise still in the game you ben and tony who were you hoping would come back or were you just like were you actually hoping for somebody who was a complete outcast to come okay back? so super funny is um when the five of us were sitting over there during the challenge we were all rooting for natalie wow yes wow. every lot because we're like Oh my gosh, she has stuck it out over there. Like, well, her and like Amber, I mean, for real, they they had been over there and we were really surprised that not that it was those two that didn't pull the sale, but just I mean, wow. You know, they've yeah. they've been there a long time. So um yeah, we were all definitely rooting for um Natalie to get back into the game. We thought, what a what an epic story. <laughs> for her to be voted out first and then get, get back in. But again, we have no idea that they can buy idols because we can't. Um, we had no idea that they're hammering peanut butter. We can't buy <laughs> peanut butter. You know, we um, just all, all that type of stuff. We didn't know that when we're paying for like the fire tokens that it was going to people on the edge. Mm. really yeah so i was under the impression that like when i bought my steal a vote advantage like you know like when you when you play monopoly and you get money from the bank like you're not getting it from another player you like or or, or you have to pay your fine you don't pay it to another player you pay you pay it to the bank you pay your rent mm. to a player but you pay your your 10 property tax. Yeah, yeah whatever, the whatever. Time, yeah. that goes to the bank so i was under the impression that oh when i buy these it's going to the bank, AKA the producers, you know, mm -hmm. they're keeping it. I think had we known that, Hey, FYI, you're, if you buy this disadvantage or pay this ransom, you're giving somebody on the edge six tokens and they can buy idols and stuff. Well, then of course we're not going to do it. Like it, right. but we had no clue that that's what they were using it for. So you've, and what, did Natalie make you guys aware of that when she came back or did you no. not know until the game ended? No. Oh, wow. Because we didn't know she had an idol. So when I'm sitting oh. there telling Tony, like she doesn't have an idol, she doesn't have an idol. And I'm like so adamant about it because I'm thinking of it logically going, you're telling me that they're going to let somebody who was voted out first come into the game <laughs> fully loaded. Mm -hmm. They don't even have to tr survive one tribal council. I I don't think so. Come on, this is winners at war. No way. And Tony's <sighs> like, I get it. He's like, you are everything you're saying is logical, but look at the way she's acting. She doesn't even seem scared. And I'm like, yeah, but she's probably trying to bluff us so that we think she's got something, mm -hmm. you know. And and I was wrong. I mean. But logically, that should have never happened. It did, and I was way wrong, and Tony was right on it. But uh, yeah, so we, so yeah, she definitely didn't divulge that a they were buying peanut butter, b that they were, um, you know, because we're sitting here, we're feeling bad. Like, geez, Louise, you haven't eaten anything. Like, oh my gosh, eat some rice. Well, little do we know, she had three jars of peanut butter out there. Like, mm -hmm. what? Yeah. And you know, and and then. Uh, and at that point, we didn't know about the idol. And then we found about the idol. And then and it, oh, that idol was bought on the first time. I, I, I mean, I don't know. And it I was, was going to say, like, a great point here. You think about this. Michelle buys a 50-50 coin. The, the tokens she uses are to Natalie or Parvati, whoever gets it, being able to buy advantages to get back into the game, which once you get enough of those, then you're going to try to buy an idol. 
-hmm. So So Michelle, like, had she known that probably isn't going to buy a 50, 50 coin. Of course Tony, Tony, who gets the extortionate disadvantage might not buy that because it was eight tokens and he could sit there and say, I'm not going to go home anyway. So I can't participate in the challenge and I can't vote, but I'm not going to get the votes because of how well he was playing that, that literally paid for Natalie Anderson to be able to get back in the game and give Tyson an idol. That's that's crazy. Well, and Nick too. I mean, Nick giving someone a disadvantage in a challenge, that's not that big of a deal. Like mm-hmm. Ben almost ended up winning yeah. and they, they coughed up eight tokens. Like I said, we didn't know these were going to people. We thought they were going to the bank and, but mm-hmm. they were going in their pockets. So it definitely would have changed things. So from your side, um, when it comes to the fire tokens, you guys have that menu, but we really didn't see like any kind of any discussion of the menu until I think the last day that you guys could use fire tokens. When I, I think Denise bought rice, was there ever consideration to pooling your fire tokens yeah. to looking for, to look for an advantage? Um, just cause we, we really didn't get to see much of that. Okay. So our menu was um, an advantage and a challenge, but that was only as a tribe. We didn't have that um, okay. for an individual. Um, and then we could get rice, we could get beans, but they were like five, five dollar or five tokens for a bag of rice, five for a bag of beans, a tarp, comfort. So typically on the seasons, you're getting, you're winning tarps, you're winning um, blankets, pillows. Well, we didn't get any of that this season. Mm-hmm. So we would have had to buy it with fire tokens, which, you know, we don't know what they're going to be used for. So when I get my steal a vote offered, I'm like, that was the first like, oh, okay. So these are going to be for other things. But we had all pooled our, on DeCal, we all, we all pooled our tokens together and we were going to buy an advantage in the challenge because we wanted to win the challenge. And, and it was, I think it was four tokens um, for an advantage in the challenge. And it was like me, Sandra, Kim, and maybe Amber, Mm -hmm. we had a great, like ours got, we basically drew um, people's tokens out of a hat. And that was who, that was who had to cough up their tokens. If we were going to do the advantage, we decided not to do the advantage. And then, like I said, once we start seeing that we need these tokens to pay for things, well, now we're like, okay, well, we're not buying a tarp. Okay. We're not buying um, a bag of rice. We're not buying because no, we would rather not have, we'd rather be wet and be able to buy something that comes into the game, you know? So we just didn't know. Yeah. And, and you bring up a good point with you guys not knowing, cause that was going to be the next thing I was going to ask is what you knew about edge and what you didn't, because I think a lot of fans forget we're seeing it from the edited perspective and we're getting 20 different points of view and then a 21st, which is what they want us to see, you know? So we're getting every single element told to us while you guys aren't and you are making it seem right now like yeah we didn't know anything Mm -hmm. and i think a really good point on fairness in terms of all this is when you bought something the tokens went to edge and then they could then buy something else for themselves to like it, it felt like it had a culmination whereas for you whoever saved their tokens there was no real like congratulations you Mm -hmm. saved 10 tokens and now you'll get something equivalent to three advantages in a challenge to get back in the game or an idol at final six. Like it's crazy to me that Natalie, and this would have been the case for anybody. I don't care who was over there, but that Natalie has the opportunity to buy an idol for final six. When you, Tony, Denise, Michelle, and Ben do not have the opportunity to buy an idol for final six. I think that's mind blowing. Um, Yeah. That, that might've come up the night after we got back from that Mm -hmm. tribal council. Uh, you couldn't even buy an advantage. No, um, shit hit the fan when we got back. Cause we were like, you're kidding me. And so it was, cause we're like, basically being voted out of the game, you're rewarded for it. Like exactly. it's, it's all reward and no risk. And all the risk was coming from what we were taking in the game. And in fact, they have all the info. Like, so everyone that goes over there, um, you know, in a regular season two, the pre jury, is gone. So you don't nec- you don't get to know if you didn't play with some of those people what happened early on. Well, you know now. Mm-hmm. And so it, it 
like every story completely follows you and it morphs and it turns into a telephone game before you know it. Like you're like, wait, where did that even come from? And so what buddy, just a minute. Okay. Give me just a second. Go get something to eat. Okay. Mom's <laughs> almost done. Sorry. Hey, no, ready, just get something to eat. Yes. <laughs> he's excited. He's on, he's on TV. I so know. Well, see, now he can see himself. So he's not going to go away. Yeah, no, that's uh, fine. Hey, this is, this is great. It's like, you're the one, it's like uh, one of those like Disney cartoons where there's two heads and one doesn't talk and the other one does talk. This is great. <laughs> um, so I'm sorry. What, what you had said. Not um, <laughs> Oh, the, the rewards yeah. getting oh yeah, how, how it's rewarded. And that's nothing against like Natalie. Like she didn't pick mm -hmm. to have this happen. But, um, you know, like our only opportunity at getting a fire token was like to win a challenge. And so I know for uh, like, you know, when they did the, the carry in the firewood, well, everybody completed that. And, and, um, so it's it's almost like they got participation tokens for even oh, just right. doing it. And I, and in order for us to get any fire tokens, we had to win a challenge and which I've never won one in three seasons. And so um so like the opportunity just wasn't there, you know. Right. Um, that, that's mind blowing to me that you ran seven marathons on seven oh. continents in seven days and haven't won a challenge in Survivor despite winning once and making the merge all three times. Just just I, throwing that out there. I <laughs> know, and, that, and that, that's but that's what I say to my husband is I go, you know what? Here's the deal. I've one time, and that was the legacy advantage. Had safety at Tribal Council hmm. in three wow. seasons. I have never been safe at Tribal. I've never had to hit immunity idol. And I've never had individual immunity. So it's like, I mean, let's, let's. That's yeah. impressive. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and so turned, so, turned down an idol this season too. Right. Right. Because I knew I didn't need it. And so, um, Knox, come on, buddy. Get, well, hey, go get some chips or something. <laughs> <laughs> Does Knox want to talk about what the family visit was like? Is that what he's here to say? Knox, do you want to tell you what it was like when you were on the island? Huh? No. That got see that got that, that got him scared. You're gonna now get like, like, I, now I'm done. I know I feel terrible. Wyatt left for work, so it's like Oh no, don't worry about it. I mean honestly so we're bad. looking at the chat over here. Everybody is so entertained by it. I me and I love it. Alexa loves it. If you if you don't mind it, we don't mind it. It's you know it's it's, it's up to you. <laughs> I feel terrible because it's like a zoo, but <laughs> I mean if you guys don't mind it, then no, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> Right, finish your thought, and then I I want to hear about um, breaking into the other camp. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. So, I guess uh, anyway, just the whole risk reward. It's nobody's fault that that's the way it was, but that's just the way it was, and I it really wasn't fair to the people in the game. And again, it's it's none of the players' faults. Like we didn't design it, we didn't set it up, we didn't have it be this way. But um, so you can only play the game that you know, is in front of you. And so, yeah, it's any hate that Natalie is getting from if she is or whatever, mm -hmm. she didn't, she didn't make the rules. Right. So it's what it is. And, and you can't be mad at her because she was allowed to buy an idol. It's not her fault. I mean, it, it's kind of like when, when I was asked to play game changers and people are like, why was she asked? It's like, don't be mad at me. I didn't call myself up and ask me to play. They <laughs> called me. So, you know what I mean? It's like, and, and it's like, don't be mad at me that they called it game changers. I didn't name the season. I didn't call myself like, so let's, let's be mad at somebody else. Not me. And I, I think that's the thing that like we all get caught up in as fans, like in social media and whatever. It's like, you're not a game changer. This you're not this, you're not that. And like, it's just easier to kind of just like, you know, hammer it down. And I'm sitting over here and as like a huge Michelle fan, I sit here and I say, I'm surprised she got less votes than Natalie. But at the same time, I, like I was talking to somebody else from your season. I won't say names, but I was talking to somebody else and they were saying that like, you can't like exactly what you just said. You cannot hate the four people who voted for Natalie. You can't even really be surprised they did it. The option was there. And so if it's there and they want to, they want to decide to do that. That's on them to do it. Right. They can make that decision. So mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, okay. Breaking into the camp. 
Yeah. Um, it's so funny. Knox, come on, buddy. Um, okay, so I get the steal a vote uh advantage and and it says that i have to break into a camp so i'm like hey t come here i gotta talk to you mm-hmm. and he's like he's like yo what's up sarah and i'm like you know like you don't have to whisper it's just us <laughs> <laughs> like, nobody can hear us but I, I go hey i got this advantage he's like what and i'm like just chill out man i haven't even told you anything yet <laughs> and and i go but i gotta sneak into uh the other tribes camp he's like oh my gosh no he does that yeah and he's like you're kidding and and i he's like i go would you just let me tell you what's happening and so i tell him like i gotta sneak into the other tribes camp at night and uh he's like oh my gosh oh he's like bro oh. and i'm like it's gonna be okay i said this <laughs> i need you to do go get some charcoal from the fire um and put it in a coconut and hide it by the well so that when i leave uh you know i could put like camouflage on and he's like okay okay and so uh so i go hey but you gotta cover for me at night when i'm gone and he's like i got you i got you so i go (laughs) nobody goes to bed like until it's dark right and usually we go out on the beach and we look at the stars and and that's another funny story in itself but um Tony's like, yeah, everybody should, wow, we're all tired. Everybody go to bed. <laughs> like, the sun's still <laughs> out. We're like, let's chill out for a minute. <laughs> so we go lay down and no joke, everybody's laying down except Tony's standing up and he has this stick and it's like the sticks like as tall as him and he's just standing there. And so it would be like, I really, so I'm laying there and like, I'll close my eyes, which I don't know why it's not like people can see them open, but it's almost like when your dad puts you to bed and then you, and he's like, it's time for bed. And then you like lay there and you close your eyes and then you go like this to see if he's still there. And then you close (laughs) them. That's like, I would do that. And Tony's just standing there with this stick, like on fire guard. I'm like, dude, chill out. So he was going to step on my foot. Like when it was when the coast was clear and everybody's sleeping. So he comes over and he's like stepping on my foot. And I'm like, yeah, I got it. But he keeps doing it. And I'm like, I know I can't go yet. Like just chill out. And then he comes over and he's like poking me. And I'm like, Tony, I got it the first time. So then he goes, he says, I go, so where's the coconut? And he goes, I'm just going to go with you. And, <laughs> and and before this, he's like, yo, is there any way I can go for you? You can't go. He's like, be so careful. I'm like, yeah, it's like, hey, Tony, I'm not going to die. Like, <laughs> they're not going to kidnap me. He goes, yo, if they see you, you got to run. He goes, don't let them get you. And I'm like, they're not going to get me. Like, it's, it's not, it's going to be all right. So anyway, we go over to the well. And he, you know, he's, he's leading me. He's got this stick and he's w- w- waving it around. And so I'm thinking charcoal. So he starts putting the ash on my face and it's like falling down in my mouth. And I'm like, what the heck, dude? He goes, you can't even see it. I go, what? Well, you got to like rub it on there. And I look, I go, dude, I told you to get charcoal. I go, this is ash. I said, <laughs> this is like like f- ashes from the fire not like black ashes like gray mm-hmm. you know a white i'm like dude this isn't gonna work so it's like fun and and it won't stick on so he's like i gotta spit on it and so now he's spitting in his hands and now like the camera guys are busting up laughing and <laughs> and but we're like Shh. you know and he's he's doing this well then more falls in my mouth so then i spit but then I, but I spit on the ground and then he yells at me for spitting on the ground and not in the bowl. And he's like, no, you got to spit in there if you're going to spit. And so then, then next thing I know, I, I'm like here. So I spit in the bowl, but as I go, it blows all the ash up in my face. And we're, I mean, it's the biggest hot mess in the world. And we were dying laughing. It, it really was hilarious. But um, so I go, I get done, I get back. And Tony immediately pulled, he's like, come on. And he pulls me down to the beach. He's like, how did it go? I'm like, it's fine. I'll talk to you in the morning. He's like, but did you get it? I'm like, yes, just we're fine. Like just stop. And he's like, and then we're walking away and he's like, pulls me back. And he's like, he's like, nobody saw you. I'm like, Tony, it's good, dude. Yeah. It's just, it's so funny. That's how he is. And uh, if he wasn't like that, it would be boring. 
Did you I, wake up I, the next morning with like ash and spit just all over okay, your face? Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> so I definitely had to wipe it all off. I made sure like I wiped it all off. Um, down in the in the water when I got back and whatnot because I because I, I needed to make sure you know that people weren't like what the heck's going on so I love I love I love the idea that you're trying to be as subtle as possible and now you have cameramen laughing and it's like oh, yeah. are sleeping you know I'm like gonna... nothing was subtle at all about any of this it's oh yeah like. we talked to so it's like the night crew producers that were out there and, and not like the day ones and oh the the day producer for that segment was like oh my gosh we heard and they're like <laughs> and they were like it sucks we missed that and i go seriously it was probably one of the funniest things ever like if you were mom. i would love for them to mom. show the raw of mom. that just a minute buddy. sure <laughs> um so yeah okay do it then so <laughs> um no, I, I mean, I, yeah, that, that moment was hilarious. And like, that's like what we all wanted from Tony all season. And then, uh oh. <laughs> Go get a towel. Right. Buddy. <laughs> do you need, to, do you need to? No, it's fine. No. Okay. Um, what was, what was it like? So you obviously were on the season with Tony and his spy shack. Oh, okay. yeah. And now you have to deal with the spy nest and you're his like undercover person. What was this like? Okay. So wait, before we get to spy nest, there was spy bunker, right? And that was mm -hmm. on DePaul. And we, we had actually made the spy bunker together. Um, and that's another funny story. So Tony's like, Hey, uh, you know, get these people going to the well and they don't, they don't, show the spy bunker until I'm at Yara, but he was actually in the spy bunker at one point on to call when I was there. And, um, he's like, he, it's first thing in the morning and he goes and he gets in there and I get him covered up and now he's on the ground and there's like thorns and bugs and it's disgusting. And I'm like, you're really going to lay in that. And I'm like mm -hmm. covering him up with like prickly thorns and stuff. And I'm like, Oh, this can't be good. Well, um, he's like, you got to bring, you got to bring, <laughs> sorry. <God. laughs> yeah. Anybody who's so listening, perfect. we just got a parkour demonstration. In the back right I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, oh God. It's embarrassing. Like, so anyway, Tony gets in there. And I'm back at camp and now it's first thing in the morning. So I'm dumping people's waters out. And I'm like trying to chuck mine. And I'm like, does anybody need any water? And everybody's like, no. And like, like nobody, everybody's water's empty and nobody wants to go get any water. So I finally go and get him. And I'm like, Hey T, it's just me. He goes, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and he's like, yo bro, I've been in here for like four hours and it wasn't four hours. They did actually tell me the actual time on it. And it was like 42 minutes, which I mean, we've all played hide and seek and you know, yeah. when you're hiding, like it, it seems like you're hiding forever. So I can see why he thought it was four hours. Um, he's like got itchy bugs all over it. I mean, yes, it, it had, it was a long miserable time and he stuck it out. And then, so the funny thing is I get him out of there and I'm like, Tony, I tried, nobody would come. I'm I like dumped all the waters. There's no water. Nobody wanted to come get water. And he just looks at me like, and then takes off running. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> so it was hilarious. But, uh, um, but yeah, so then the spy nest, yes. So it was always sending people down there and then knowing he's up there. And then, so when I saw Natalie had the idol, I actually positioned myself where I know he's right behind me mm -hmm. and I'm pulling out and I'm like reading the note up. Like, so he can, <laughs> he could read it, but he can't. And I'm reading it loud. I'm going, this is a hidden immunity <laughs> idol. And I'm be like, just so, because I know that I'm going to get 20 questions if I don't like, if I'm like, no, oh, she's got a, a real idol. He, he, how do you know it was real? How do you, no, I'll just read it all and show you everything. And then, and then, so the best part about that is I didn't know he was almost falling out of the tree. And so he gets down and we meet up at the beach and I'm like, yo, T, can you believe? And before I can even say, can you believe she's got the idol? He's like, did you just try to kill me? And I'm like, no, <laughs> what are you talking about? He goes, you had her there for an hour. And I'm like, 
okay, I thought I was giving you good intel. Like you had the bird's eye view and now you're mad at me. Like, sorry, I did my job. And he's like, yo, I was hanging on by my fingertips, you know, my toes, I almost fell. I was going to break my neck if I fell out of the tree. He's like, and he was like so mad at me. And I'm like, oh, I'm sorry, but she's not the idol. Come on. We got to, we got to strategize now. Let's stop talking about how you think you almost died. <laughs> Does does Tony ever exaggerate? This is a question I have. Um, the, he doesn't think he exaggerates. No, <laughs> hey, that's but, a, but he really thinks. Yeah, that's that. I just love every so far every story you've told. It's like Tony feels like it takes <laughs> it to the nth degree every time. Oh, so yeah. I just. You know. No, that's how he, he thinks. That's why he is that, buddy. Just a minute, Mama's almost done. Yeah, I will in just a minute. Um, so. Yeah, he would say he just reacts normally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that North Jersey <laughs> thing. Yeah, yeah, that's the North Jersey thing. That's how my dad's family is. They're the same way where everything is. No, I was there for 10 days and you're like, dude, you were there for like five. What are you talking about? Right, you know, it's right. always that exaggeration. Yeah. It took it took me five hours to drive there. Actually, it took you 45 minutes, but sure, <laughs> yeah. if that's what we need to do. Um, no, that, I mean, that just sounds awesome. And it, it's, it's just funny to me, like that somebody like Tony has not one survivor twice based on all these stories and everything that you're telling. Cause he's just, I don't know. He's a treasure on TV. I don't know how he pulls it off, but he yeah. does. But um, it's, it's because he really is a genuine guy. Like I'm telling mm -hmm. you the people that do well, it's like your true colors shine out there. So if you're fake, People will see through it. Like, I, yeah, I don't think in 39 days you can hide who you actually are as a person. I think people will see through it. And I think mm -hmm. that's why when you see Tony do well, um, you see me do well a second time, you see Aubrey, you know, you see Ty. These are good people that are making it, you know, and, and they're making it because people can see that they are real. They are genuine. They are. And it's not a fluke. They, hey made it here, you know, by accident. So Michelle, you know, Michelle is so fun to be around and she's really nice too. You know, we went on a reward with Denise and I went on a reward with Michelle at final six. That was actually a reward and immunity. And we had pasta and chocolate cake and wine. And we, we all like got pretty tuned up and we had a blast. Like the three of us girls, it was so relaxing and, it was so fun. Like it, it was, it was one of the, it's like in my top three, I would say days out there, um, memories. Cause we just mm -hmm. had a blast and she's, she's just fun to be around, you know? What, Plus, um, the cake and wine sounds like the best reward. Oh my gosh. It was insane. And we ate so <laughs> much cake. Like, why, we did, why do you think they stopped? Why do you think they didn't show like all of these rewards? Because I feel like we had so edge. many on the season. We just didn't know. You just edge, huh? Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's too much. They don't have the time. I mean, we won pizza on Yara. Um, we, I mean, we, you saw us won peanut butter. Um, they, the, the Chinese one they showed, uh, but then they didn't show the one Michelle one. Then Ben and Sophie and I think Kim. I'm not sure who else, but they won tacos or mm -hmm. taco bar. And so, um, yeah, I think that might've been all of the rewards. Mm -hmm. Did you clear up the Chinese food rumors? Are you allergic to Chinese no, food? No, that was a total <laughs> joke. Like, <laughs> we analyzed that. We were like, there's no way. The and it was great because we had David on food. right after you said that. That was our favorite yeah. one. Wait, did David say that I was? He said you were allergic. He, what did he say? Like MSG or something? MSG. No. Okay. I didn't know you could be allergic to MSG. <laughs> no, like everybody was, okay. Because everybody's going, oh. Um, You're playing the it, game. Yes. It was It was either she's playing the game or else um, she doesn't like Chinese food. And so the joke is, oh, it's neither. I'm allergic to it. <laughs> like a total joke. And, but see, I have a really dry sense of humor. And so Ben and I, or, or I mean, Nick and I are clearly laughing about that being like, duh. But, and, and then, so what makes it even funnier is, is that people don't get it. And so, mm -hmm. no, um, I gave that up to Nick because I told you law and order, we, we were together since the beginning. And so 
um, when Nick got blindsided on that, um, it's kind of like, you know, when Tony did to me, like you feel bad and you're like, Hey dude, like we are still together. I got to show you that we're together. It was his birthday too, you know? So, and as much as people are like, big deal, it's your birthday. No, you're removed from your life. You're mm -hmm. out there. There's no comfort. There's no nothing. And then it's your birthday. And then you're getting shit on, on your birthday. You're like, Oh, this is real fun. And so I, that was my way of showing Nick, like, Hey, I'm with you. I, you mean a lot to me. I'm giving up food on survivor for you to show you that you, my, your relationship with me means something that it's not that, that I'm not against you. I'm with you. And so that's, yeah, it was a hundred percent. Like I felt bad for, for leaving Nick out of the boat. I felt, you know, it's, it's not fun to be left out of the boat, especially by people. When Tony did it to me, I was pissed. So when we did it to Nick, he was pissed. And so I, that was my way to, of showing him, Hey man, like I'm still with you. So it was a hundred percent not gay. Well, it's game on the fact that uh, it's showing him that I want to be with him, but it's personal on the fact that I know what it feels like. And I hope this can be a token of like my appreciation for you understanding in here, you can have the reward. So do you think it. because it's an all returning season, let a, let a forget that it's an all winter season, but because it's an all returning season and you all know each other, do you think that that kind of eliminates the whole, like, Oh no, now we need to vote out Sarah because she's trying to get Jerry votes or she's trying to do this. Or do you, were there still people who were like, uh, Sarah, why did you do that? Yeah. It was more like Jeremy was like, that was gameplay. But cause I mean, you saw there was a confessional with me and Tony right after that, where I'm like, I don't care if people think that that was gameplay and I'm going for jury votes. I go, I don't really care because I knew at that point, like where we're at in the game that that's petty mm -hmm. to like, I knew where my bonds were with people that that wasn't going to be enough to set anyone over the edge. And so it was definitely like, it was worth it um, for me to do because it wasn't going to be enough to upset the apple cart. So mm -hmm. it was only going to be positive. And if someone thought it was gameplay, okay, whatever. Like mm -hmm. it's not, like I said, that's not going to get me voted out. Yeah. They weren't going to flip on you for that. Right, and that, right. that was right after the Wendell boot, right? That you did that. Or was that right after Tyson the second time? It was after the Wendell vote. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, all mm -hmm. right. So I got to ask you, we haven't really talked about him at all, but what was the deal with Adam on this season? Because you weren't with him on the first try, but you were with him on the second try, but then you saw him at the merge. And I know a lot of people were talking about how he was playing so much and he was kind of like weaseling his way around. What was like your, what did you think of him coming into the season? And then what was like your take from him actually on the season? Um, so going in, I'm trying to think I've, I had met Adam at, I think I did Hearts of Reality and, and had met him there. And, you know, he was cool. Mm -hmm. So, but uh, I mean, we didn't keep in contact after or anything like that. And um, so going in, once we got together on Yara, um, and Ben told me him and Denise were close. You know, Denise and I were from the same hometown. So I thought, hey, there's a connection there. Um, so right away on Yara, like things are cool. But then this whole, when he starts thinking that I've got the idol, um, I, I, I'm like, Adam, I don't. So let's just drop it. And, but yet he mm -hmm. kept going at it. And then now I'm like, Hey man, I don't, the last thing I need is hitting the merge and you telling everybody I've got an idol. I don't. So let's chill out. And so, um, you know, he had said something to Sophie or Ben and it got back to me again. And I literally was like, dude, what's going on? And I know him and Ben had like kind of the same thing where Ben had told him something and then Adam spilled the beans. And so it was kind of more like Adam was having trouble not spilling the beans. Um, so that when we all got to, once we merged, like Adam, you, you just kind of pitched that you wanted me, you, Sophie and Ben working together and you kind of abandoned ship. And then once I heard that he threw my name out, I'm like, Mm -hmm. probably not a good move and so and, and so was that kind of why you bonded with ben was it because adam just wasn't somebody that you really felt that you could move forward with or was the the bonding with ben more natural than that uh yeah i would say bonding with ben was just more natural like me and ben what buddy um 
give me just a few more minutes, okay? Yeah, stop. Hey, if you just let me finish, then I'll be done, okay? Um, yeah, no, Ben and I are, I mean, we bonded um, right away. And but even Adam and I, I mean, we we had a lot in common, and we we got along. And he would talk about you know his poker and and whatnot. Um, where I don't know, it was just he was less like committed. Like Ben mm-hmm. was committed. He was full. Sophie was committed. You know, I was committed to them, and Adam was more like on the fence. Um, and I could tell he wasn't committed to us, you know. I'm just pumped that we're all about to eat some crackers. Yeah, I'll take <laughs> yeah I could I could use I'm still like around the dinner time part of my night because I'm in Arizona. So I oh. could use some crackers. Um, no, so so then okay, we could we can kind of go to the final four here then. I was wondering, so you and Tony are making your fires next to each other before you actually all go day. to make it. Yeah. Was was Michelle actually really good at making fire and no. Okay. So why did Natalie pick Michelle to come with her and put you versus. All right. Here's the real here's here it is. We get back and Michelle, Tony and I are like all devastated, you know, cause we feel like we've been in the game since, you know, the beginning and now somebody that was on the edge gets to make the decision. And so to, we all kind of split up. Natalie wanted to go swimming or something. So we all split up. Me, Michelle stays at camp and kind of make does her station there. Tony and I go off in the woods and we sit there and, you know, of course we, um, we're like, can you believe this? You know, we're just talking through everything. Well, Natalie comes down at one point and says, asked to talk to me. She basically tells me that her or that Michelle and Tony are going to make fire. And her reasoning behind it is um, she didn't feel confident enough that she could beat Tony in fire. And she made it pretty clear that she thinks she wins against anybody but Tony. So she's like, well, um, she says, if Michelle beats Tony, it's not going to matter because Michelle, she didn't feel Michelle had done enough or that the jury felt that Michelle's done enough in the game to win. So she's like, it's not really a cherry on the top for her. It is what it is. If Tony beats Michelle, um, Tony's already played, you know, it, it doesn't really pump him up anymore. He's already won four immunities, had hidden immunity idol and the jury already thinks he's running the show. So, um, and he's like, she's like, you know, but if, you and Tony, if you beat Tony, it's a cherry on top for you, you know, blah, 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 adds to your resume. I don't want that. And so really the only logical thing to do is Natalie and Tony make fire, right? Mm -hmm. Or not Natalie and Tony, sorry, Michelle and Tony. Tony. That's her best bet at, at winning the game other than her stepping up and doing it, which she wasn't going to, she didn't um, practice. So, so at first I'm going, yes, I'm sitting in the final three, right? But then as we're like making fire throughout the day, I'm going, wait a second. Like, is, is the goal to sit in the final three or is the goal to win? And so now I'm going, um, all right, well, if I, if Michelle beats Tony, or if Tony beats Michelle in fire and me, Tony and Natalie are the final three, Tony and I are going to split votes. Because like my voters, I would say were more like loyal than uh, like, like, for example, yes, Tony got Ben's vote and Denise's vote and Sophie's vote. But if I'm sitting next to Tony, like I'm pulling those votes from Tony because they're, they were going to be loyal to me. And then as I'm, as like, I'm kind of breaking it down, like, okay, if I get Ben's vote, Denise's vote, um, Sophie's vote, Yule's vote. I'm pretty sure I get Danny's vote. Um, and then um, like Kim. Well, so, so there's like six votes, you know, for Sarah. Well, now Natalie's already gotten her four. So there's six left, right? Mm-hmm. So then if they're analyzing this and going, okay, well, if the other six then vote for Tony, 
to tie. Natalie makes a tiebreaker. Natalie was very vocal about wanting a female winner. And I'm telling you, Rob was not going to let me win the game. So what do they do then? They have to pile their votes on uh, people that would have voted. Tony would have piled their votes on. And truthfully, what you probably would have seen was Natalie win and Tony get third. Which wow. is so, it's and, so and it's crazy. Thing, but, but you see the logic behind it. And when you spell it out, cause, cause then we split votes. So now I'm going, wait, wait, wait. The worst thing possible is me and Tony sitting in the end together mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. then we're splitting votes. So now I'm going, how do I convince Natalie to let me make fire? Well, I go up to camp to try and talk to her and I see Michelle and Michelle, uh, bless her heart, but she like flips off Natalie and I go, what's that all about? And Michelle's like, just not having a good time right now. Mm -hmm. And she was struggling to make a fire. And she's like, oh, she just, you know, and, and she's like, can you guys get away from me and make a fire? And not, not, there's no ill will towards any of us. Um, but I'm going, so then I'm like, all right, here's my in. And I just told Natalie, I go, oh, look, I said, Michelle, she's not in the headspace. She is not, I've been making that fire next to Tony all day long. There's no way uh, she's going to beat him. I go, she's upset right now. There's no way I go, can you do it? And Natalie hadn't been making fire at all. And so she's like, well, no. And then I'm like, I can do it. And she's like, are you sure? I'm like, hundred percent. I go, it's in the bag. I can beat him. And she's like, are you sure? And I'm like, yep, yep. And now, and I said that to her with like the last 10 minutes left. Um, and so going in to tribal, I was 99% sure she was now going to let me do it. And I'm sitting here going, this is going to be your biggest mistake if you mm -hmm. do this, because I mean, you potentially, I'm not saying Natalie wins if Michelle beats Tony in fire. Um, I still, I, I think I still walk away uh, mm -hmm. with the win, but if Tony beats Michelle, I think it gets real dirty, and and it's it's very interesting at that point. Yeah, that's so that's so crazy to me that that was even an option because I just felt like going to the season. We had all talked about it. I mean, we were on Fair Play's podcast, and you know, we had heard Sister Nino, talk, and we were all of the thinking that on an all winner season, they've all made it to the end and won without being voted out. They're never going to vote for somebody to win. Who's been voted out. I mean, I'm kind of, I mean, look as much as I would have loved to have seen a final three with you and Tony, both in it to duel to duel sitting there to see something like Natalie win. And this is not a knock against Natalie, as we said earlier would have been devastating mm -hmm. to see somebody who gets voted out first, like to see somebody who gets voted out at all when survivor is not how it's supposed to be. And that, that would have been devastating for an all winter season. And people would have just been like, forget this. This is stupid. Exactly. And, and, you know, and it sucks for like Michelle, cause Michelle, I mean, in my opinion, and it's, it's, it doesn't matter. You can remove their names and you can put number one and number four. And, and so it has nothing to do with the person, but I think Michelle deserved votes before Natalie did. Mm -hmm. I mean, she, she didn't get voted out. And in fact, Michelle's never been voted out. So yeah. uh, to me, that's impressive. And, um, you know, and then Natalie, like she didn't survive a single tribal council. Like the, the first one she got voted out. And then the, the second one she attends, she has an idol. The third one she attends, she has an idol. The fourth one she attends, she has immunity and then doesn't even take the chance to step up and make fire. Like, um, I don't see how that even compares to uh, Michelle staying in the game 39 days and not only just these 39 days, but she stayed 39 days in Koran too, without getting voted out. So, um, but again, it's not Natalie's fault that she ha had the opportunity to get back in and with the idols that she did and whatnot, that's, that was the game that we played this season. And, and so my last question then oh, regarding this would be, with if Michelle had sat with you and Tony, do you think there would have been a similar split there or would that, cause that's the final three that we had talked about when we had Troy on the podcast. That's what all three of us wanted. We wanted you, Tony, Michelle, cause we feel like that would have been like the most competitive final three because of what you said with the split, but would there have been as much of a split in that situation or would Michelle just not have gotten really any of the votes? You know what? No, I think, I think Michelle almost wins. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. So, um, I think, at that point, 
I'm going with um, Ethan votes Michelle. Um, I, I would almost say Wendell and Nick and Adam might vote Michelle. Um, Natalie would maybe vote Michelle at that point. Parv would vote Michelle. I mean, there's six right there. You're so, making me cry, Sarah. I, I know. <laughs> I know. I'm telling you, it's it was not in the bag for anyone. As much as people want to go, oh, so-and-so dominated the game. It's like, well, let's keep in mind that you're seeing 43 minutes of what's happening out there. But um, yeah, it's I'm telling you, it this season was no matter how many the the different combinations, I think I truly think it's up in the air. What yeah. I think yeah. I think Knox is about to fight us if we yeah. keep you How any about, longer. Sarah. We'll do five more minutes, okay? Alexa, you yeah. got anything? I got to turn a light on. It just got pitch yeah. black outside, yeah. and I wasn't yeah. expecting it. It just <laughs> came. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> How many Ritz crackers did he have? I don't know. Let me see, buddy. How many did you eat? Oh, you ate some cake too. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> this is what this is what happens, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear he eats regular food too. Hey, Knox, <laughs> what's your favorite food? McDonald's. There you That's go. That's our favorite. That's our Could favorite. Not support that more. <laughs> I mean, I almost had that today, but my girlfriend wouldn't stop the car, and I'm very angry. Not but cool. anyway, uh, not hey, cool at so all. I will go to McDonald's with you any day you want to. <laughs> and I'll go every day if you want to. We can go there for all three meals too. I Sounds great. I pretty much do. I mean, Alexa knows when when I was in LA, when Alexa came out to visit for the season thirty seven oh finale, we ate McDonald's twice, and she was only there two days, and it was yeah. you know breakfast. And then the only reason we didn't eat it more was because we were drinking relentlessly the other two right. meals of the day. So. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like my type of hanging out. So yeah. Anytime you want to eat McDonald's. Time. When when oh. the uh, when the coronavirus thing is passed, we'll I'm go to McDonald's, so Sarah. In. Yes, I'll buy. It. I'll buy. Done. I love. I love it. I love it. That's because you you've won a million dollars. It's only <laughs> fair you buy me McDonald's. Let's be, you let's be real here. I I use coupons at McDonald's. Like oh, when yeah. I go to the and then Wyatt's brother for Christmas. It's one of the best Christmas gifts I've ever gotten. He gave me a gift card to McDonald's. I was like, yes. <laughs> what's, your, what's your order? What's your go-to? And then and then we'll let Quarter you know. Quarter pounder. Quarter pounder. Fries, soda. Yeah, the, uh, so the number two. Quarter pounder with cheese and fries. Yep, and a diet coke. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. See, there I do you the regular coke. Otherwise, I'm with you. Yeah. I just normally mix up. I get like everything. I like when I go to when I go to fast food, I like to consider, you know, how like if you eat like a healthy balanced meal, you get your vegetable, your your meat and your and your starch. When I go to McDonald's, I like like my chicken, my beef and my and my french fries. That's what I need to make sure I have. So, so, so I used to get like a McChicken sandwich, mm -hmm. a double cheeseburger plain, you know, with just um with, with just cheese and and the meat and then mm -hmm. fries. So that there you go. Be a yeah, I mean that's what I'll normally do. Now they have the thing where you can get the uh, the two for five with the McDouble and the mm -hmm. McChicken or whatever, and I do that. And... Honestly, McDonald's is the best ever. Spencer and I would talk about Shamrock Shakes all the time. Uh, yes, they're phenomenal. I, I I missed that this year. You did? I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have, to have like nine of those. Oh, yeah, I had two. I got two of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, well sorry. You... Go ahead, Alexa. I was going to say, at least for me, last thing, because we talked about this before we went live. Sarah, could you show us your new tattoo? Yeah. Um, all right. So I, I think uh, August when I got home. So I ended up getting, um, I don't know if you can see up in there. That's my uh, passport stamp from Cagayan. Um, I've got my Game Changers uh, stamp right there. Then I've got yeah. that is Knox and Wyatt's passport stamp from when they came out this season. Um, then this is my bib number from when I ran the seven marathons. Um, and then obviously I did the seven continents um, for the marathons. I got my game changers torch on the back. Um, and then our team name was team hold the plane. So I've got the plane right there. <laughs> And then the um, compass rose from Game Changers. So just kind of all 
I gotta um, ask you too, like what made you want to do the seven marathons in seven days? Like what <laughs> what was what was the purpose of this? No, it was dumb. Um David Sampson <laughs> was like, Hey, we're gonna do this, and I'm like, mm-mm. I I am no no desire to do that. That's some dominant gross and no mm-hmm. thanks. And I don't even think it's humanly possible. And um, he didn't take no for an answer and basically signed me up. And then once that, once I was signed up, um, I didn't have a choice. Uh, and so I had to start training and then I did it. And honestly, it was one of the best thing I've ever done in my life and super thankful for him for pushing me to do it. I, I, as somebody who used to do distance running in college and everything, nope, sounds yeah, good, Sarah, That's but right. nope. I know. I you, wait till David tries to. You tell David Sampson no. See how well that goes over. Yeah, I know that's true. I could see that. I could yeah. see that. That's fair. That's fair. Well, do you, do you have anything else you want to add before we let you go? Um, I think we covered everything. If you guys come up with anything else, I I'll totally come back if you want me to. I mean, we'll I mean, we'll do another have you back. McDonald's drive through, but uh, I think I'm good. I think that needs to be a whole se- a series, like in the fall when things are open back up. But if Survivor's not on quite yet, Alexa and I will just go out to Iowa and be like, all right, let's go. We're going to McDonald's and we'll, we'll record the whole situation. Oh my gosh. It'd be so, it, it would be epic. It would be amazing. And it would be really entertaining. You Absolutely. know, what's, it, yeah, what's that show? Like comedians in cars getting coffee, but yeah. this is like three people know. in cars eating McDonald's. I, I'd watch it. That's all I know. I'm in. I love Sign it. Me up. All right, well, Alexa, Sarah, why we're gonna we're gonna have to bombard you with just a minute and a half of us promoting ourselves. But Phil, yeah. why don't you tell our fans about this really cool plan that we have? Okay, so we've told you all that we're going to be doing the thing with Once Upon an Island uh, starting in June, which actually today we decided we're going to be doing on Mondays, not Tuesdays, so everybody knows that. That's going to be our winning strategy retrospectives. Uh, We're going to do four seasons at a time over the course of 10 weeks, which means Sarah will be in there during the, uh, I guess that's the ninth episode. I can't count this high, but during the ninth episode, we'll be talking about Sarah's game, so you'll have to wait until the end of July for that one, but that'll be on Mondays starting June uh, 1st, I believe is the date, but we have to talk to Once Upon an Island about that. And then Alex and I, uh, we're trying to figure out what to do for the $20 patron since we did our power rankings game, which I won during this season. And now we want to do something else during the off season. That'll keep the $20 patrons worthwhile so that you guys aren't just throwing $20 at the wind. So we're coming up with some sort of trivia game. We're going to have more details on it. But what our thinking is at the moment is if you're a $20 patron, we're going to do like a, a tournament based type thing. Um, where you're actually going to come on and answer questions and we're going to, we're going to figure something out. So if you want to be a $20 patron, our plan right now is we're going to do that. Uh, you have to, we want you to email us, reach out to us by like June 4th. I think that's the Friday, uh, the first week of June, reach out to us. Just kind of let us know that you'd be interested in doing something like this. If you're one of our $20 patrons, you can reach out to us on Patreon or you can reach out to us on Facebook. However, however is easiest for you. This is something we're working on and we're trying to work out the kinks, but uh, we, we think it'll be really, really fun uh, to do kind of like a, a tournament of our $20 patrons, give you guys something to look forward to other than our five and $10 podcast, which are always so much fun and will be so much fun this season as well. Uh, we're doing the old school versus new school. Um, during this uh during may for our retrospective and then for our q a we'll be doing that sometime next week alexa that's like i forget anything that was incredibly impressive phil that was like it was like reading the end of a pharmaceutical ad and you were just like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was faster um i think that's about all we have follow us on facebook twitter instagram subscribe to us on youtube give us five stars on itunes we would love to thank our sponsor mcdonald's they have always been <laughs> yes. so wonderful to us Please sponsor us um, at McDonald's or at anybody. Most importantly, Sarah and Knox and Wyatt, thank you so, so much for coming on. We had a really great time. We loved watching you this season. And I I, I think I, I speak for a lot of people where I'm really, really happy that you brought up gender bias and survivor. It's something people do not talk about enough. So thanks for talking about that. Thanks for coming on tonight and great haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Listen. My husband wasn't going to let me do it, and then I did it, and then, I mean, I'm not kidding. You're saving $15 every two weeks or whatever you end up doing, you know? Yeah, so so come on over. I got you. (laughs) I'm going to need it. You're going to need, like, a lawnmower, though. Yeah, he needs that needs What are you talking about? What's wrong with the beard? No, I thought you said you wanted it cleaned up. 
No, well, yeah, I do, does. but what's wrong with it, you know? Oh, nothing's wrong with it. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. Everybody, you have a one 